Doctor, you're trained as a neonatal doctor. You deal with infants right. a lot. What, which is very different than treating Alzheimer's, what mm -hmm. kick-started you mm -hmm. into thinking, okay, what, what we're trying here isn't working. I've got to find something else. Mm -hmm. Well, yeah, with Steve, we were actually trying to get him into a clinical trial uh, for Alzheimer's. Um, there was one a couple years earlier uh, called Florizan that they were um, uh, beginning a clinical trial and he didn't meet the criteria because he had had a history of depression. And uh, But this time around that was not a criteria. Um, it, there was a vaccine um, from Elan that was supposed to help remove the beta amyloid plaque from the brain um, which is believed to either cause or contribute to Alzheimer's disease. And this seemed like a very promising study. Um, they, apparently the plaque would be removed fairly quickly uh, once you get this vaccine. And so um, we tried uh, to get him in to that study and there's a test called the mini mental status exam, a 30 point test. Um, and he only got 12 points on the test and he needed at least 16 to qualify and he had qualified in every other respect but that. So we were fairly devastated at the time. And uh, the physician said, but we could come back in a couple weeks and see if, um, I mean, he could try again and see if he could qualify for the trial. So we scheduled an appointment uh, two weeks later and then another clinical trial became available and this was an oral medication to help reduce um, amyloid plaque in the brain. And uh, so I scheduled these, um, screenings for the clinical trials on back-to-back -back days that I was off and the night before the first screening I started thinking uh, well what if he gets accepted into both he can't be in two clinical trials mm -hmm. so uh, I got on the internet and started looking at the risks and benefits of the two drugs to help us decide you know which might be better uh, for him to participate in and I happened upon a press release just purely by chance that um, included another treatment that at that time was called AC1202 and they had just named it Ketosin. It's now known as Axona, but it was a medical food and they didn't really say what it was in the press release, um, but they did say that it uh, nearly half of the people with Alzheimer's who uh, were given this had improvement in memory. And so this is not something you normally hear about, Alzheimer's medications. Mm -hmm. You know, they, they basically say they slow down the course of the disease, right. they don't improve memory. So I thought, well, this is very interesting, but what is it? <laughs> so I um, continued to look on the internet and I came across their patent applications on uh, free patents online. And it was about a 75 page long um, document. And um, I learned a lot about Alzheimer's <laughs> mm -hmm. and that a whole aspect that I was not aware of uh, with Alzheimer's disease that there's a problem of insulin deficiency and insulin resistance in the brain. Hmm. And um, basically that this starts happening about 10 to 20 years at least before a person has symptoms hmm. of Alzheimer's. Um, and there's a problem with getting glucose into the neurons and the neurons basically malfunction over time and eventually die. And when, uh, there are uh, billions of neurons um, so apparently you can compensate for quite some time until a certain number of them die off and then um, you, you won't be able to compensate and you'll start having symptoms as you start losing certain pathways in the brain. Uh, so um, it's basically a problem of getting energy into the cells. And our most common, I mean the, the energy that we normally use for most of our cells most of the time is glucose, you know, to fuel our cells. Um, in the U.S., we have a high carbohydrate diet. Um, we're not starving, um, so glucose is our primary source of energy. Um, but what this uh, in this patent application, one of the things that um, they made a point of was that um, during starvation, um, you switch over after 24 to 36 hours um, after you use up the carbohydrate that you have stored in your body, um, you switch over to using ketones as an alternative fuel uh, for the brain and other organs. And um, so uh, ketones come from breakdown of fat normally. Uh, you start breaking down fat and uh, some of your cells can use just uh, your basic fatty acids, the heart and muscles use fatty acids, but these longer chain fatty acids can't cross the blood brain barrier. And um, so the brain doesn't have access to those. And um, what happens are the fatty acids are also converted in the liver to ketones and ketone bodies do cross the blood brain barrier and can be used by cells as an alternative fuel. 
So um, this company had uh, the brilliant idea that if you could raise um, ketone levels with something you consumed, um, that this could potentially provide cognitive improvement, that it would fuel the neurons, uh, the neurons would function better, and you'd have uh, improved uh, cognition and memory and, and this type of thing in somebody with Alzheimer's. And um, what the food that they use is something called medium chain triglyceride oil. And um, I was familiar with that as a neonatologist because back in the late 70s and early 80s, we were using it to, um, with our premature newborns, we were adding it to their formulas. Every feeding we'd give them uh, medium chain triglyceride oil because it was well absorbed um, and it did help them grow. And then they started adding it to the formulas and uh, making premature infant formulas um, that are higher calorie than full term baby formulas. And so, um, the medium chain triglyceride oil, um, when it's taken in, when you eat it, it doesn't require digestive enzymes. It's taken directly into the liver where part of it's converted to ketones. And this is uh, a very unusual, you know, it's um, the only food that I know aware of, that I'm aware of, you know, are the medium chain triglycerides that are converted by liver to ketones. Um, but again, they cross the blood brain barrier and can provide energy to the brain cells. So one time in the patent application, it mentioned that medium chain triglyceride oil is extracted from coconut oil, that that's where these come from. And um, coconut oil is the richest source uh, of medium chain triglycerides. It's nearly 60% medium chain triglycerides. Okay. So uh, I got uh, from them an idea of something else that might be available there to help Steve.